Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch. So today we're talking about the Godot game engine, specifically a new feature coming in Godot 3.2.4, which is the next stable release. It should actually ship any day now, week slash month now. Should be here before the end of the year, I'm guessing anyways. And the big thing in that feature is there is a new Godot FBX importer. Now, FBX, as much as you love or hate it, it's probably the most important file format for 3D graphics out there. Hopefully, GLTF takes its place eventually, but in the meantime, most professional assets, quite frankly, are shipped in FBX. If you get assets off of uh, the Unity Store or the Unreal Engine, um, they're probably in FBX format as the raw format. This is the default file format for 3D Studios Max and for Maya. So Blender needs to begrudgedly support it, and so does the Godot game engine. The thing is, in Godot 3.2, they added it via Asset Imp or As Imp. Uh, and the problem was there, they kind of ran into some issues with it. So what actually happened is a fellow named Gordon McPherson actually took the asset importer code and spent a number of months. I think we're talking 14 months. Yep, 14 months to get it working right. They stripped out all the code that wasn't relevant to FBX. So we started with 70,000 lines of code, ended up down at 12,000 lines of code. And they went through, rewrote all the mesh code to support all formats of FBX meshes correctly, built an entire abstraction for the FBX transform information, which was very complex and convoluted undertaking to get working properly, and designed a better handler for the animations, um, which can compensate for the complex transform information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, the nutshell version is they created a new and better version of the FBX importer that is coming in Godot 3. 2.4 or the next release. So what I'm going to do today is see how well it works. So first things first, if you want to check this out yourself, at least if you're watching this within a few weeks of release, you're going to have to build Godot from yourself. Make sure you check out the right branch because this is not Godot 4, which is what the master branch is. You have to check out the 3.2 branch. Um, but once you've got it, download it, build it, and then we'll run from there. So let's go ahead. Uh, this is a custom version. So you can see right here, 3.2.4 beta I built myself. We'll create a new project. Of course, that means going into uh, temp. And we'll call this one FBX2. All right, so go ahead and create that. We'll make an OpenGL3 ES uh, project. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up a very simple scene here to start with. And then we're going to bring some assets in and see how well it does. All right, so here's our new scene. Uh, we'll add a world environment in here. Uh, let's set up our world environment. So new environment. This is just so we've got consistent lighting in our world. Our background, we're going to use a sky. And then, yeah, so sky, create a new uh, procedural sky edit that out sky sure we'll go all defaults here we're good to go all right so we got a background here we got a sky set up we're just going to change a couple of these things so the things just look a little bit better basically that means go to tone mapping i do this every single time by the way either go to filmic or aces if you want it to be a little darker i tend to go aces i'll go filmic on this one and we'll turn auto exposure on and we'll turn subsurface scattering on all right, everything else should be pretty much fine. This generally, this set of things just makes the world look quite a bit better. We're going to have a lot of brightness coming in, uh, but we're good with that. Okay, so we have our scene here. I'll go ahead and scene this, save the scene. Sure, spatial. Sounds good. All right, so now let's bring in an asset and see how well the new FBX importer works. Now, the best way to probably check this out, we'll come back to this document in a minute, by the way, but... One of the best ways is probably with Mixamo. Now, if you've never used Mixamo before, it is uh, full of characters like this. Uh, no search results. Okay. So let's just show some of my characters there. You can bring up characters and then you can apply animations to them. I took the night character and applied a run animation to it. I'm going to switch it so that it's in place so that we're not moving around. But there is our starting point. Okay. So we have an animated model from Mixamo. Go ahead and download that. We'll stick with the defaults. We're not going to make anything special here. I want to test how well it does with the normal defaults. So we're going to go FBX, normal FBX version, and with skin normal animation, no keyframe reduction. Okay, so we have our model. It should be downloading as we speak. All right, there it is. So sword and shield run. So now what we need to do is go to that folder. All right, so there it is. We'll just grab that guy and copy. Now what we need to do is go back over to Godot, open this folder. So click on res, open in file manager, and paste. So we just imported in our FBX file, and here we are. Bump, bump, bump. So let this import. This is going to take a second. It generally, it's not very long. Um, I do notice a couple of errors, at least the last time I did this. 
So we got some uh, FBX material, ambient, ambient color, emissive, and specular were all ignored. So what you may have to do if you get sort of an error like this is just pay attention to the output here. Those are things you may have to manually configure yourself. Ambient color, emissive color, specular color in this case were all not used. Okay, so here is our guy. Uh, let's go ahead and see what one looks like. So let's drop one into the scene. And there we go. All right, so let's sword and shield guy. All right, you, let's get back to the origin. Zero. A zero and zero. All right, there we go. So there is our knight in the scene. Hey, not bad. All right, so there's where we started from. It's right there. Okay. And here is where we ended up. Obviously, we are sitting in a T-pose right now, but materials came in. Everything seems to have set up and looks correct here. I don't see any real artifacting or anything weird going on. Now let's go into this guy and see how the animations came in. All right, so go down here. Let's find the uh, animation player. All right, so here we go. Our animation is imported as Mixamo. Uh, let's loop that guy and autoplay. All right, here we go. So play that guy. And there is our animation. All right, so I call that one a success. Came in directly straight out from Mixamo into Godot. I don't see any real weird artifacts or issues. This is pretty much game ready. So first one, we are definitely going to call that a success. So the next one we did, uh, I already did it in advance, by the way. Spoiler alert, it works out pretty well too. Uh, so I'm going to get it from one of the next most common places to get uh, models these days to see how well it works. I picked a model pretty much at random. You might recognize this one from the thumbnail. This is a diorama uh, from Sketchfab. The reason I picked this one is more or less it was the first thing I found that had the source format in FBX. So I went ahead, I downloaded the original FBX file like so. It is already here. So if I go back to my downloads folder, you're going to see the zip came down here. I just basically extracted it out and there is our source and our textures. So there is our FBX file. There are our textures file. I'm just going to go ahead and we'll grab those two things and we should still have our, here we go. So drop that into our folder like so. So that will bring it in. Godot should be doing its best level job to do an import here. Uh, this one, I think, for some reason, took a little bit longer. And once again, when I watched over here, I did see some. So these are from before. So let's see what happens this particular time. So yeah, went, for some reason, when I imported this guy, it did take a little bit longer. I actually had the feeling that this one might fail. So you can see here, over here, we got the spinny bit going. Uh, but in the end, it actually did work out just fine. But it did take a bit of time. So I'm... I'm just waiting for it now. I'm not, trying not to pause the video. See, so oh, here we go. So this is the catch again. We've got uh, a handful of things we're missing. Diffusive, shininess, specular color, and so on. So there's certain material properties that didn't necessarily transfer over when importing this model. All right, there we go. So I think we are in now. So let's go and see how our diorama works. So that one was called, it's here under source. It's asset display. And let's just instantiate one of those into our scene. Ba, 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 ba. Where is my message? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is one of those weird things that happened with this guy. So it's in the scene. We're good. Uh, so here, let me just go ahead. Uh, with asset display set, I'm going to go ahead and transport this guy to the origin. So importing is not always a flawless occasion. You noticing a problem here? Yeah, there's definitely one here. So it actually worked just fine, by the way. Uh, but this is one of those things you're going to get with assets. Uh, yeah, it's really tiny. All right, so what we're going to have to do is just scale that guy up. So let's do a 100-fold scale. There we go. All right, here we go. So we now have our diorama imported into the world. So as you can see, it is not absolutely flawless, um, but pretty darn good. And again, everything came out looking pretty pretty good. Um, so I tested it with a number of other things. I had one that I had some artifacting with, but it was uh, special effects that were being done with it. So definitely some snags a few times. And then one other time I had it create a material. So the material like this guy was created, but for some reason wasn't assigned to the mesh. But as soon as I assigned it over to the mesh, everything worked fine. So so that then is the all new FBX importer. And I have to say it it just works. And to be honest, I find FBX importing or just asset importing in general is one of the most troublesome areas of uh, just working with game engines on the whole. I review tons of game engines over time. And this is one of those areas that I always find probably the most painful. And the fact that this pulled in an animated mesh off Mixamo and a pre-modeled thing off of Sketchfab, two of my most common sources, and it did it without real issue other than, you know, scaling size. And that's 
that says one of those things. Always expect that. And by the way, uh, you could generally get around that. Go here, importing. A lot of the times you can apply a scale on import. I don't know if this added that in though. Uh, doesn't look like I can do an auto scale. Oh, wait a minute. Angular, nope. Uh, it doesn't look like it scales on import. So no, you're going to have to manually do that, it looks like. Uh, but really, that's the kind of the only real catch you got going on there is I had to scale up this one model to bring it in. And that's just because different things use different coordinate size. I'm kind of used to that one. Uh, but on the whole, it worked out quite well. So if you're interested in learning a bit more, I would highly recommend actually heading over to the uh, the article. I will, of course, link this down below. There's a lot more to it, basically how this was paid for, the process that went behind it, why the FBX file format is in use, why this project was done, why they didn't just use the FBX version of the binaries that were provided by um, – the, uh, the Autodesk, uh, you know, binary versions. Uh, so you get all of those details here, but it basically it boils down to they did this in the nicest, most open source way possible. And a company called IMVU was the sponsor behind this work. So to IMVU, uh, that is definitely a cool thing you did. So they paid for a year of working on this, uh, hundreds of hours for his team members internally. So this was a community driven project. And, um, it's one of those areas where uh, it will make a huge, huge impact on a lot of people's first uh, experience with uh, using the game engine. Because like I said, this is one of those pain points with every game engine out there. So having a really solid FBX importer that is open source and really purpose made for Godot. Uh, excellent news all around. So they're really happy to see this. Again, if you want to check it out yourself, unfortunately, you do have to build Godot from source yourself. Uh, basically, it's the same as doing it normal. Just add dash dash branch 3.2 to the end of your Git checkout and then build that. You're good to go. Uh, so that is it. Uh, at the new FBX importer in Godot. I Ah, I hate to say this, but it actually seems to work pretty much as good or perhaps better than the GLTF for my testing. I, I do certainly, I want GLTF to 100% be the future, but it is really cool that in the next version of Godot, uh, we are looking at uh, having a really solid version in here. By the way, they're also going to be forward porting this work to Godot 4. Uh, so that is in the future plans. They're going to finish porting a rewrite to Godot 4 um, and then a couple of other improvements and potentially some of those material things that weren't coming through. Uh, most are supported. Some are not there yet. And so that's what we're seeing when we're seeing uh, some input errors here, some of the materials not found. Uh, emissive lighting material, specular materials, and so on. They seem like they're not working perfectly. Known issue going to be coming. Speaking of known issue, there are a couple to be aware of there as well. I will link this article in the linked article down below. So if you want to learn more about that, it will be there for you. So yeah, special thanks to IMVU for sponsoring this work and special thanks to Gordon McPherson for doing this work. You make Godot 3.2.4 a better place. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.